Biofuel in Australia Biofuel is fuel that is produced from organic matter biomass, including plant materials and animal waste. It is considered a renewable source of energy that can assist in reducing carbon emissions. The two main types of biofuel currently being produced in Australia are biodiesel and bioethanol, used as replacements for diesel and petrol gasoline respectively. As of 2017, Australia is a relatively small producer of biofuels, accounting for 0.2% of world bioethanol production and 0.1% of world biodiesel production. In 2016 minus 17, biofuels contributed only 0.5% of the total liquid and gaseous transport fuel energy mix in Australia. Total commercial biofuel production for 2018 is estimated at 290 million litres ml, 250 ml of ethanol and 40 ml of biodiesel. This article mainly deals with biofuels for personal vehicles, though cooking, heating and electricity generation can also use biofuel. Historically in Australia cooking and home heating have been accomplished by burning wood, a biofuel. 909,000 households in Australia. Types of biofuel in Australia. Biodiesel. Bioethanol. Bioethanol is colorless alcohol made by the fermentation of biomass, using glucose derived from sugars, for example, from sugar cane, sugar beet or molasses, starch corn, wheat and grains, or cellulose forest products. Ethanol produced from renewable energy sources, biomass, is the most promising biofuel for the future. In Australia, there are three major fuel ethanol production facilities that produce ethanol primarily from waste wheat starch, grain sorghum, and molasses. The total capacity to produce ethanol from these facilities is around 440 million litres a year. Approximately 68% of this production occurs in New South Wales at a single production facility in Nora. Ethanol in its pure form can be used as a fuel for vehicles, but like biodiesel, it is usually mixed with petroleum to produce a blended motor fuel. By blending ethanol and petroleum it oxygenates the fuel mixture, meaning it will burn more completely, thus reducing the amount of harmful emissions. Ethanol fuel blends are available in a number of different blend levels. The names indicate the percentage of ethanol the fuel contains, with etin containing 10% ethanol and EIT5 containing 85% ethanol. The most common blend is etin, which is available at more than 600 service stations nationally. EIT5 is offered through a smaller number of fuel outlets, targeting specialized vehicles. EIT5 vehicles the Fuel Quality Standards Act 2000 relating to EIT-5 states that the fuel may only be used in vehicles that have been specifically designed or modified to use EIT-5. These include flexible fuel vehicles FFV and VATE racing supercars. The first FFV available in Australia was the Saab Biopower 9.3 and 9.5 which coincided with United Petroleum launching and selling EIT-5 at two of their service stations in Sydney and Melbourne. Caltex followed in 2010, launching their EIT-5 product BioEflex made specifically for flexible fuel vehicles. Holden announced at the same time that Caltex EIT-5 would be suitable for vehicles within the Holden Commodore V Series Roman II range. The Australian Vate Supercars Motor Racing Series have used EIT-5 since the beginning of the 2009 season. EIT-5 is available at selected service stations around Australia. Vehicles compatible with EIT-5 can also run on petrol or etin. Biofuel Production Facilities Government Support Two Australian states have introduced biofuel mandates, Queensland and New South Wales. New South Wales requires bioethanol to constitute 6% of petrol sales, essentially meaning that 60% of all petrol sales need to be eaten. The Queensland mandate currently requires service stations to ensure that ethanol makes up 3% of their total regular and ethanol blended unleaded petrol sales each quarter. The mandate commenced on 1 January 2017 
with customers remaining free to choose the fuel they use. From 1 July 2018, the Queensland bio-based petrol mandate will increase to 4%. There is a degree of controversy surrounding the ethanol mandates. The Australian Government Productivity Commission recommended in 2017 that both the NSW and Queensland mandates be axed by the end of 2018, saying that they affect competitive dynamics and end up costing consumers more due to premium fuel substitutions. The Queensland bio-based diesel mandate requires 0.5% of all diesel fuel sold to be biodiesel. The New South Wales mandate stipulates that biodiesel be at least 2% of all diesel sold. The Queensland government has created a number of programs aimed to make the state the centre of manufacturing and producing biofuels for commercial production for military, maritime and aviation uses. Regulation and Taxation Federal government regulations apply to the quality of petrol and diesel fuel in Australia. The Fuel Quality Standards Act 2000 provides a legislative framework for setting national fuel quality and fuel quality information standards. Fuel quality standards apply to petrol, diesel, biodiesel, autogas and ethanol EID-5. Legislation from July 2003 imposes a 10% cap on the concentration of fuel ethanol blends. This was the result of vehicle testing showing that petrol blends containing 20% or more ethanol may cause problems in some older vehicles. There is also a requirement that retailers label blends containing fuel ethanol on the dispenser. Domestically produced fuel ethanol is currently effectively exempt for from excise tax until 30 June 2021, an excise of 38.143 cents per litre is payable on petrol. Campaigns As of 2018, ethan educational campaigns have been introduced by two state governments. The New South Wales government and partner NRMA brought in the Fuel for Thought campaign in 2017. The Queensland government and partner RAC has a similar ethan OK campaign. Both have compatibility checkers and information for motorists about ethanol blend fuels. Issues Food security The main deterrents of producing and consuming biofuel for personal vehicles are food security and land availability. One of the most concerning issues for the Australian Population is the increase in food market prices arising from arable land being converted from food crops to biofuel production. For this reason, investment in and production of biofuels in Australia is highly debated. Environmental Impacts There are widely documented environmental benefits of biofuel use over fossil fuels in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. However, Emissions vary depending on the feedstock used during production and must be accounted for. For example, when using an etin blend, greenhouse gases compared to unleaded petrol are lower by 1.7% from wheat to 5.1% using molasses. There is no data for EIT-5 in a passenger car to compare to those statistics. However, emissions would be much lower than etin due to less petrol in the blend. Greenhouse gas emissions for biodiesel from waste vegetable oil range from 89.5% lower for bone 100 to 4.2% lower for B5 compared to diesel. Biodiesel produced from tallow range from 29% less for bone 100 to 1.5% less for B5 compared to diesel and for canola the values range from 15% less for bone 100 to 1 poi. It is also important to note that for some feedstocks, greenhouse gas emission balances are not always positive. Therefore, investment should be directed for feedstocks that have the highest positive greenhouse gas balances with the lowest environmental, economic, and social costs. There are potential negative impacts on the environment due to land use change. Biofuel crops are grown using monoculture farming methods, which may reduce biodiversity. Direct and indirect land use change can result in changes in carbon stocks on land through a loss of above and below ground biomass and soil organic carbon, which can lead to an increase of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere.
Also, when crop-based biofuels contribute to deforestation or fragmentation, the pollution benefits of biofuels can be compromised or eliminated, producing a net increase in pollution. There are also many indirect impacts derived from the production of biofuels. For example, in Europe a study was conducted on the production of biodiesel from rapeseed oil, showing that using bone hundred instead of petrol diesel increased acidification by 59% and eutrophication by 214% due to the added nutrients and run off. Australia currently has no definite policy, rules or regulations relating to biofuel production with regard to biodiversity conservation or environmental sustainability.